April 30th, 1980, a day that most would have expected to be like any other. However, this day started an event which would mark a change in the way the power of the British military is seen in the public eye all around the world. This is the story of London's Iranian Embassy Siege, an operation which almost ended in disaster but turned out to be the most famous scene of recorded British military action to ever take place, all within the space of 11 minutes. At 11.30am, six men calling themselves the Democratic Revolutionary Front for the Liberation of Arabistan stormed the embassy with machine pistols and handguns taking 26 people hostage, including a British police officer, Constable Trevor Locke. Within minutes of the takeover, news reached the British Special Forces, the SAS, at their base in Hereford, Scotland. Immediately, they loaded all of their equipment, including stun grenades and explosives, into Land Rovers. Armed with Browning high-power pistols and the now-famous MP5 submachine guns, they drove down to London, where they would wait six days before making their final assault. Whilst the SAS was waiting for intelligence north of the embassy, one of the hostages was released as he was severely ill and needed medical attention. During the plans to have him removed, PC Travelock told him to pass on the information about the gunman's weapons to the SAS unit. Later that day, the Foreign Office found the visas for the six gunmen. The SAS now had names and faces of those inside. A coordinated assault could then be made using this information. They moved from their barracks to the building next door where they finalised their plans. What sounded like two or three shots were heard coming from the direction of the Iranian embassy. On the sixth day of the siege, three shots were heard and one of the hostages was killed, his body being thrown outside of the building. This gave the SAS the all clear to commence their assault. Four teams moved into position, one of the teams were the abseiling unit. As they began to make their descent, one soldier accidentally put his foot through the window, alerting the gunman inside. The teams were then rushed to get in before the hostages were shot. As the team on the first floor balcony set off the charges and stormed inside, the leader, Salim, was killed by one of the soldiers. He had been trying to talk negotiators into giving all of the gunmen inside of the embassy their visas and being allowed to leave the country to travel back to Arabistan. As the abseiling unit made their way down to the balcony, the leader caught fire from the flames started by the assault resulting in him being badly burnt and unable to continue. Unfortunately, one of the gunmen noticed the soldiers making their descent and ran into the room where the hostages were, starting to open fire. Fortunately, only one of the hostages was killed and another injured. The SES had killed four of the six gunmen at this point during the assault. The other two were yet to be found. Whilst two of the teams searched for them, the remaining teams began to evacuate the hostages from the building as the fire had begun to spread. Whilst taking them out in single fire, one of the soldiers recognised from their briefing an outfit of a gunman inside. He threw him to one side of the hostages and shot him dead. This only left one gunman to be found, who was later discovered to be hiding amongst the hostages. He was identified and arrested and served 28 years in prison. The raid was considered an almost unqualified success. The soldiers went back to Hereford and were interviewed and questioned over the deaths of the terrorists. This was the first time the SAS had been revealed to the public, and the footage of the siege spread across the world, bringing instant fame to the previously secret unit. The SAS are still active to this day, fighting wherever needed, but out of all of their 72 years, this was the operation that shone above the rest.